This is Anderson Penn's podcast, episode 21, for Sunday, October 14th, 2012. This is Brian. This is Lisa. This is the Anderson Penn's Radio Network. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't do it, you wait for it. For, for, for those who don't know, every time I, <laughs> I say welcome, Lisa usually just says thank you thank or you. <laughs> something. She always tries to throw me off. Um, I just think we should start with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we sat down and uh, tried to come up with a couple of topics for today's podcast, uh, actually, this for me, this went back a couple of days because I just couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything interesting. Uh, I decided to throw it out to the, the Facebook community. And within minutes, uh, we had all sorts of interesting suggestions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's just call this, uh, this edition of the podcast the Viewer's Choice Edition. Uh, and some of these uh, we will probably use in, in, our fut- in some future podcasts, but uh, uh, we had some pretty good ideas. So um, a pretty long list, so I guess we'll just, just get cooking on this. Uh, among them, and uh, at top of the news today, of course, um, Felix Baumgartner uh, jumping from 127,000 feet. It was well uh, over... 24 miles 24 and a half miles up <laughs> out of a perfectly good <laughs> safe capsule what the heck was he thinking Geronimo um, uh, in fact this this was the first question that came up was what <laughs> pen should Felix Baumgartner use or should he just stick with a pencil well my first question is what's he doing <laughs> what sending his mom a postcard on the way down I mean it took him what less than 10 minutes yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Don't they make those? What are they? Fisher space pens? Where yeah, they are, they're supposed to write in zero, zero gravity yeah. or upside down or something? Yeah, I, I don't actually have one of those, but uh, I think I used to have one at one point. But uh, Christmas is coming. Uh, it's okay. You know, no, I, I'll find something. I think that'd be a great uh, Christmas present. Great Christmas gift for somebody. Um, <laughs> no ballpoint for you? No, no ballpoint for me. But uh, it, it is a little known fact. That uh, Esterbrook, uh, an Esterbrook pen, made its way to the top of Mount Everest, uh, which, while not 127,000 feet, uh, 29,029 feet, or at least that's what Google tells me. Um, now, this was actually not this very pen, but this particular <laughs> model, uh, the Esterbrook Ballpoint Model FJ, uh, and apparently it worked just fine. Uh, at the top of Mount Everest at that altitude. So Well, it's because it's an Esterbrook. It's going to work just fine 29,000 feet under the sea as well. I think that's <laughs> the next thing. 127,000 feet <laughs> under the ocean. Go, Felix. Yeah, but so if you, if you didn't catch the jump, it's really was outrageous. Just very cool. I, I'm still just stunned. I can't imagine <laughs> being his mother watching him just... Free fall to Earth. Yep. At what seven hundred and something miles and almost eight hundred miles an hour. Yep. I'm I'm sorry. I don't think the body should <laughs> should did no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Felix shouldn't be writing anything. No. Um, another suggestion we had was uh, for calligraphy books. Uh, which which books should uh, should we be uh, looking into uh, to learn some better calligraphy? Which actually was perfect timing. Um, I was just thinking about this the other day. Uh, I'm a college professor and I scribble all over my students' papers and I hate my scrawly writing. And I've thought about getting a couple calligraphy books um, and I want to spend maybe the winter break improving my handwriting. Uh, But since the question came up, now I feel inspired to do some, some research. You get pens when we do research. I'll buy some books. Awesome. Uh, we do have what, one book that you bought from Conkeys a long time ago, yep. a local bookstore that went out of business. Uh, it's Learn. called Learn Calligraphy by Margaret Shepard, The Complete Book of Lettering and Design. Well, she's one of the the, the better known names in the industry, so I, I may have to try that first. You, you know, you might have to um, you might have to learn how to use a uh, flexible nib. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 not gonna happen. But I'll, I'll look at your book first, and and after that we'll see. 
uh, yeah, it um, it looks like a, a pretty good book. I, I've had it for a while. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and you know, it, it does take a commitment of time to uh, um, to go through it and to learn it. So just like anything else. So uh, if any any of the listeners out there have a preference or favorite calligraphy book, we'd sure love to hear about it. Um, let us know, Facebook or Twitter or what have you. Yep, absolutely. Send, send us a letter, um, email, whatever. It'd be, uh, it'd be good to know what other options there are available. Um, I think the uh, the library had a couple, but... Yep, we'll check those out as well. Yep. Uh, another topic, which uh, is near and dear to my heart, uh, surviving a pen show. Which part is near and dear, the pen show or the surviving part? Both. I oh, love awesome. going to pen shows. Um, it, it is, you know, so... Right. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, Columbus, uh, the Columbus Pen Show is coming up in what three weeks? Yeah, a little over, a little over three weeks now. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, so I think as we get uh, closer to Columbus, that's a perfect topic. Uh, besides comfortable shoes and lots of cash, there there is a method to the madness. There is, and uh, a couple of secrets too, and we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll hold on to those until. Until uh, the time is right. And then we'll share them with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, another one of the interesting topics that came up was uh, uh, from a good friend of ours, Antonios. Uh, he asked, what is missing from your Esterbrook collection? <laughs> there should be nothing missing from our collection. <laughs> oh, there is. Trust me, there is. Oh, no. Um, uh, and just, just proof that we, we did find something in Dallas that we didn't have. Um, we did? Yeah, yeah, the uh, the yellow clipless pastel oh, that's right. from Mike, uh, which actually he told us about in Little Rock, and I didn't believe him at the time. You're calling one of our friends a liar? <laughs> no, no, no. I just said I hadn't seen it ever. <laughs> so, uh, right, you know, so, I, so what's missing from our collection? Uh, there are a couple of noticeable uh, items that are missing. Uh, at top, probably top of the list. Well, there, there are two items that are top of the list. Uh, one of them is in 1938, Estabrook made uh, a pair of mechanical pencils. Uh, one of them was Sterling, which is happens to be this guy here. And yes, that is the original cardboard tag uh, on the clip. Uh, and this pen in 1938 sold for $3, by the way. Ooh, an expensive one. Uh, which, yeah, and their, their, their top-end pen... Was a dollar fifty, so this is twice the price of their their top end pen. Um, they made a version of this pencil that was gold filled. So that uh, was probably like five bucks. Uh, well, the sterling was probably more expensive than the the more expensive of the two. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the price is, but um, these days I, I have seen maybe two of the gold filled pencils, but uh, I've never been able to to see one that was really available for sale. So uh, there is that. Uh, the other item that is incredibly high in the list is the Esterbrook Duograph. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, I'm not surprised. It is the, I don't have a date on it actually handy. I think I do, but uh, Esterbrook made a combo. It's a hard rubber fountain pen, mechanical pencil. It was an eyedropper with a 14 karat nib and the end of the the end of the pencil unit actually just pulls out, and then you can flip it around and put it back into the barrel so you can protect protect the lead. Um, That's cool. Yeah, uh, I have not seen one. I have a, a an, an ad, a vintage ad for it. Um, it had a patent pending clip on it, uh, but uh, I'm on the lookout for that. Um, there is also another eyedropper that was made by De La Rue called the Gold Relief. Uh, I have one. I have one of them, but it is a uh, a version with uh, sterling caps on it um, and bands on it. So I would like the plain version. There's a relief uh, number seven, which is a piston filler, uh, very hard to find. A couple of twist fillers yet to fill out the collection. Working or non-working? Don't care. Uh, copper and green are the two that I'm looking for. Uh, we have, have a, a green, don't we? We do have a green. Uh, in fact, I, actually, there's a blog post where I show the green, but it's so discolored, uh, or not discolored, but it's uh, crystallized. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's just really, really a mess. 
Um, there's apparently a demonstrator in an LJ version and, of course, uh, some clipless pastels to round out the bunch. But uh, other than that, uh, I'm probably missing something, but... It's a pretty complete collection. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty complete. So, yeah. uh, another topic, loaning a pen to someone. Oh, so tips, tricks, and how to get it back? First thing is don't loan a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never, a, what is it? Never a lender or a borrower be? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, so, what's the first, first thing you want to do? Uh, don't do it. Well, yeah, if you have to, <laughs> um, you, you might want to uncap the pen for them and Absolutely. hang on to the cap. Because now, if I just give you this, they're not going to know what the heck to do with it after they're done. Um, you know, they, they, they can't forget to give it back to you and they can't walk away because, you know, they can't put it in their po- pocket. Right. Um, and uh, the other thing that this is good for, by taking the cap off for them, uh, and this is an excellent point, is you don't risk that the person attempts to pull the cap off if it's a twist cap. Yeah, that's bad. Broken threads equal sad pen person. <laughs> Especially or, or dead a, pen person. Or what? <laughs> or dead pen person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should also have the person write on a flat service, not, you know, on their uh, on a piece of paper in their hand or something. And uh, if it's someone who's a newbie, like you're lending your pen to an, an interested friend who's maybe never tried a fountain pen, um, make sure to watch how they hold the pen and how they write with it. Everyone holds pens differently or angles the pen to the paper, uh, but try to keep an eye out for uh, gentle ways to improve the writing experience um, and, and see how they they write and, and maybe you can, you know, make it a, a good experience for them the first time out. If they have to struggle, they're never going to be interested. Right. Uh, you know, in the end, when you're at the end, when your friend oohs and ahs uh, over the pen, make sure, just make sure to get it back. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, if they're interested, offer to help help find one of them, uh, of them for their own uh, or invite them to a, a local pen club meeting if you have one or a pen show uh, to help uh, spread the madness. There you go. Uh, we also had another suggestion going to a local pen club. Uh, that one, I think we're going to save for another episode. Uh, we've gone to a uh, couple little club meetings here and there, um, over the course of our, our collecting eras, but, uh, it seems like more and more local pen clubs are, are creeping up and, and, uh, sometimes a, a little three, four person meeting eventually five, six years down the road turns into a, a pen show. That's how a lot of the pen shows started. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and and maybe we'll have a, an Appleton pen show sometime. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be the best drive ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, we're going away for the pen show, kids. Where are you going to be? Five minutes down the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, Less than a mile. So we'll, we'll expand on that, I guess, a little more in the future. Yep. Uh, another topic: uh, giving an inexpensive pen to someone. Uh, I guess uh, there is one small trick to this, uh, at least in in, in our opinion. Uh, you don't want to give anything that's too cheap. Because yep. uh, if it doesn't write well or writes inconsistently, then you, you, you might blow the chance uh, to convert a newbie. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want to spend a lot either. I mean, don't give them, you know, don't hand them a $200 pen. But Especially first time out. Yeah. Uh, we often suggest... Uh, like it shows, uh, the Platinum Preppy. Uh, it's the pen that uh, the PCA gives often to um, the Pens for Kids program. And for $4, it's a good little writer. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Really, really a phenomenal <laughs> pen. I mean, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but it's a good pen. It's it's a good little writer. And, um, you know, the, the Preppy itself is a, a pretty cheap looking plastic pen. Uh, so it doesn't you really don't mind if you throw it on your desk or whatever, but if you don't like the uh, the cheap looking plastic, upgrade to a Plazer. Has the same nib, so it, it writes the same, but it, it's a better looking uh, metal body. And recently, we had um, we we've sold a number of the Monteverdi Artista crystals, 
Uh, we sold one to a friend of ours who was going away to college and wanted to get something for her new roommate. Not very expensive, but writes really well and uh, also uses a, a cartridge or a converter like the Platinum Preppy and the Plazer. That way you don't have to uh, confuse the newbie with uh, <laughs> bottled ink and lever fillers or pistons or that really crazy snorkel. Don't don't give a newbie a snorkel. No. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever. Or a vacuumatic for that for that matter. I don't no. think I don't think a vacuumatic should be a a first pen person's pen. Yeah, I can't figure the snorkel out. I get it extended and I can't get it back in. <laughs> I I confess. <laughs> All right. Um, there's a bad joke in there somewhere. I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, it's family friendly show. Thank you. Uh, we also had a, a, a suggestion uh, update on the pen room. Uh, we are are still moving in, organizing, reorganizing. Uh, we do have a lot of pics. Uh, actually, there uh, most of them are on my personal Facebook page. Um, if, uh, if 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 you're not a a, a friend, uh, go ahead and, and friend me. That's uh, that's where you're going to see most of the pictures. But I didn't want to throw. I mean, we must have uh, I don't hundreds. Know. Wow, we don't have hundreds, but not in the basement. 30, oh, 40? Lot. We have a lot. Um, even going back a couple of years, what it, what it used to look like. but uh, Scary. Yeah, if, uh, if you want to see more pictures than what I've thrown up on, uh, on the Anderson Pens page, just go ahead and send me a, a Facebook request, and uh, uh, you can take a look. They're, they're pretty fun to look at. So. Yep. Uh, yesterday, I moved a whole bunch of stuff into the pen room, and today I'll be moving them out <laughs> to make. Uh, better use of the space and uh, better use of the printer room. Sometimes you got to try things and see if it works. Uh, we'll keep you posted. We did take two comfy chairs and a table from my office. They used to be behind me. Uh, we moved those downstairs and now my office feels much bigger and we are super comfy downstairs. Oh my, I, I just love it down there. <laughs> <laughs> Go down and, you know, we've got the laptop down there and we do everything we need, and, and the cat loves it down there, or at least Brooke yep. does. Um, and, uh, you know, in fact, last night we had to check to make sure. <laughs> I think uh, I think we locked her down there for a couple hours, and then you got up. Uh, and I went to go get Lindsay. At, at some crazy hour, and, and she was still in the same place. Yep. As she was. Yep. We, we have a litter box, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, she was just still sitting there on your, your footstool in the dark, just comfy, cozy as could be. Where are they? Are they coming back? <laughs> <laughs> They're always here. <laughs> so. uh, let's see. We're still waiting on Carpenter Joe to bring over four more bookcases because we, uh, we need the space. Yeah. It's crazy. So hopefully next week, maybe? I hope so. Okay. That would be nice to so get, uh, get some of that other stuff. Yep stuff in there uh so th those are kind of a lot of the, the topics that we we got and uh um you know keep them coming absolutely it was uh you know some things that we we hadn't even thought of so uh you know we want to talk about what you want to hear so uh what we did uh, also this week we had uh, a good friend of ours um had recently bought a, a pen from us and uh, he was so excited uh, with his brand new pen and he he took it to work uh, to uh -oh. show to show another friend of ours who's also a pen collector um, his new pen and it, it's it's the Monteverdi uh, black tie which has a it, it has a, a chrome cap and it has a really cool the barrel's got this uh, like black and white carbon fiber weave on it it's very very cool and uh, he makes it through pretty much the entire day and at the end of the day it slips out of his pocket uh. the cap comes off. And the nib takes the brunt of the damage. Point down. Point point down. So I'm going to show you a picture here real quick uh, of what this 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 poor thing looks like. It was scary. Yeah, and, and this is like day two. I mean, <laughs> that he, he had it. Um, so um, he bought it what on the weekend? He and bought, bought it on it to Sunday. Work and it was yeah. Monday or Tuesday. It was on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's the. Here's the nib, and uh, if you can see this here, it the was tip, sad. It's bent completely <laughs> straight down. Um, just crazy. I, and, and I guess what, when he, when he dropped it off, 
and I saw it. I was expecting it to be bent the other way. I said, well, you know, this isn't all that bad. Um, it could be worse. And uh, <laughs> Not to him. Well, no, not to him. I, but, you know, from, from our, our perspective, that could have been a lot worse. Uh, the tines were actually, uh, they bent together. Yep. Uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't cross or they didn't, you know, they didn't Separate. do anything. So, uh, fortunately after, after some time on the nib block, uh, I was able to, to get it straight and, uh, we got it back up and riding and, uh, hopefully, um, you know, he's, he, he was pretty happy with it when he picked it up the other day. So, um, we'll, uh, cross we'll your fingers, cross your fingers. That doesn't happen again. So, <laughs> but, uh. So hang on to it. Yep. Um, around the web this week, uh, we, uh, we, if you were checking out uh, FP geeks, uh, I had a nice article. At least I thought it was nice on, uh, <laughs> I thought it was nice <laughs> on, uh, matchstick and coin fillers and, uh, special props out there to, uh, to Lisa for going to the, um, the grocery store and buying some matchsticks. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't buy. It's sort of like like potato chips. You can't buy just one. I think I had to get ten boxes of like fifty each for eighty nine cents. So well, I, I yeah. consider it a, a worthwhile investment. Well, I think it's a business expense. But all I needed was one wooden match. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody who uses wooden matches, and you know, the know. only other thing would be like the huge, huge, long ones you have for like lighting fireplaces or yeah something but no it's you know we live in wisconsin you never know when the power is going to go out we need matches anyway yeah. we'll use them. but i thought that was kind of funny uh <laughs> and also uh this week uh julie um uh, okami uh had a nice article on uh our paper on her website so um i don't know i don't have that exact website but it's uh okami dash whatever something mm-hmm. like that uh at blogspot.com uh, and on the blog this week, uh, two new pen reviews. Yay. So if you've been uh, if you've been waffling on either the Edison Herald, which let me tell you is a fantastic pen, um, or the Twisby Micarta, which is also a very nice pen, uh, you can take a look at uh, at our reviews. Uh, on the site and uh you know it'll help you hopefully it'll help you make a decision so uh that's what's going on around the web and uh, all around the country around the country yeah so let's let's talk about i know we're we're actually only in october um but uh, let's talk about the pen show calendar for 2013 uh scary is the word that comes to mind we uh, we sat down a couple nights ago and decided it was time to uh, drop the schedule for 2013 pen shows. This year, 2012, we had eight on the schedule, and we knew we wanted to add you know one or two more for next year, and and that's not so bad. Yeah, um, as the year progressed, we we have been kept mentally adding shows, uh, so you know. One show would come up and we'd be like, oh, you know, maybe we should go to that next year. Uh, so we finally decided it's time to sit down and, and, uh, and, and write them out. And uh, <laughs> we, we even added a couple more at the last minute. Oh, my God. Uh, so uh, next year, I guess we're going to do th- lucky number 13, 13. <laughs> on the schedule, which, which actually only leaves one show in the United States that we are going to. Uh, which uh, is uh, going to be Long Island. Although I've been kind of lobbying for it. I figured if we're going to 13, <laughs> we might as well go to all of them. What the heck? Uh, you know, so it doesn't it doesn't double up uh, at all. But uh, just to give you a quick overview, um, the first one of the year uh, is going to be uh, Philly, January 11th to the 13th. Um, this will be our first one. Yep. Uh, it's a Burt show. Um, so you know it's going to be good, yeah. run well, organized well. Yeah, we're looking forward to it first time. And then uh, this will be, what, uh, in February, 14th through the 17th, so Valentine's Day Ooh. Uh, weekend. 
Um, this will be my first time. Lisa, you've been... I've been a couple times. A couple times. Years and years ago. Uh, Los Angeles. Watch out, LA. Here we come, baby. <laughs> Hollywood right here. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, March 1st through the 3rd, Baltimore. Uh, awesome. It was our first uh, first time there this year. It was really, really a good show. Uh, and what a cool hotel. Yeah, cool hotel. I mean, there's, you know, and, and again, it's a Burt uh, show. And uh, Bert Ozer of yeah. Bertram's Inkwell. His his shows are great. I mean, he provides uh, breakfast for the dealers, and I mean, that you know, was awesome. Just super shows. Uh, then the next weekend, March eighth through the tenth, head down south, y'all, uh, Little Rock, <laughs> Arkansas, uh, to be with. Uh, we have many many good friends down there. Uh, Love it down there. One yep. of my favorite shows. It's probably the only time of year I get to see my girl crush, Shannon. Yep. Uh, 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 the Padillas, uh, Mike and Tim Byler, all sorts of people. Mike uh, Silva. Yep, yep. They put on a great show, and they're just so much fun. Yep. And it's uh, it's getting bigger, too. So, it is. Um, we, we expect it to be even, even better than it was this year. Yep. Uh, that next weekend, I think, after Little Rock is when Long Island is, is it not? Yes, so, it is. Um, we could squeeze that in. Uh, but if we don't, um, we're going to wait. And, and the new edition at the last minute, uh, April 11th through the 14th, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, we went. In 09? Is it going to be four years now? Yeah, we went in 09. Yeah, it was we our weren't... first show back on was, the circuit yeah. together. <laughs> I have pictures of that show somewhere. It's it, so lame. It's so cute. Not the show, but. We were like, <laughs> it's so cute. There's like, we have like 10 pens. <laughs> yeah. We have like a handful of paper, a couple desk sets. I mean, <laughs> we barely, cases. yeah. We, we faked it to oh, fill yeah, yeah. one table. Yeah. And uh, and now we're hard pressed to get less than, less to, than to fit four. onto less than four. Yep. Uh, so that's going to be, I think that'll be a good show. Yeah. Uh, and, and as I recall last time, there were, there were two rooms, which was uh, a pretty good size. Uh, and who runs that one? That's uh, Jimmy? Uh, I think so. Jimmy I don't recall. Um, it, it, it was Jimmy for a long time. It it okay. very well may still be. But the pen club down there is very active, and uh, they they deliver lunch to your table. Oh, super. You know, Do you want turkey or roast beef sandwiches? And, and they give mm-hmm. you choices of sodas and cookies or something, yeah. and, and totally out of the blue. It was yeah. really nice. Super. It's it's another example of, of you know, one of – one of the ways you should run a pen show, you know what I mean? Yep. They, and that started again. It's it's basically run by the pen club. Awesome, awesome. So strong presence down south, y'all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few weeks after that, May second through fifth, we're going to be back uh, back down to Chicago. Oh, the wedding uh, the show. The wedding show, uh, and uh, of course for us, that's the that's the the quickest one, the closest one. So we're happy about that. Three hours, uh, three man. Hours, that's a great yeah. drive. Uh, at the end of the month, May thirtieth through June second, we'll be back in Raleigh. Terry May order show. Awesome, um, awesome show. Um, of course, they have the auction there, which we, we do love. Uh, auction in Chicago you, you too. You love it, scares me. Oh yeah, me. yeah. Um, and this year we're also going to do in July. Uh, 18th through the 21st, uh, we decided, I guess we decided this a while back. Yeah. Um, Miami, Florida. Ooh. And now I haven't been in, in a little bit of trivia. Miami actually was my very first pen show. I think mine was too. I and think I, it was mine. I think it was uh, Miami, I want to say maybe 2000. And th- that was when it was at the Biltmore. I don't think it's yes, there anymore. I was there when I, we were at the Biltmore. Were you there in 2000? I might have been. Oh my we could goodness. have been there together, <laughs> separately. I was I was buying Esther books there, by the way. Uh, I remember Deb Kinney helped me negotiate um, a sale, uh, my the purchase of my first, what I thought was expensive pen. I bought a, a Visconti Kaleido. Oh. That I loved. Okay. Nice. And she negotiated a free little pen case for me. We still have it. Oh, okay. Yep. So. Uh, I think I bought, I know, I'm pretty sure... Uh, I bought I bought a Duofold Junior. That's uh, not an Estherbrook. No, no, it's not an Estherbrook. <laughs> I, I bought a blue SJ. Okay. Or was it a green SJ? Or maybe I bought both. I don't remember. I think I bought both. Uh, I bought a red uh, Duofold Junior, I think from Rich Lot, believe it or not. I remember because the guy had 
all sorts of parts, so it had to have been rich, um, which uh, was actually a little bit of a mismatch, mismatch. I think it had a streamlined barrel and a flat top, earlier flat top cap. Uh, and then I did buy a full size uh, Schaefer Balance in gray uh, hmm. with the nickel trim. I do remember that uh, quite well. And that, and that at the time was, was the most expensive pen that, that I had purchased, uh, I, th- I believe, and I think I paid $75 for it. Yeah, you've gone over that <laughs> a couple times. Uh, so anyway, that's that's Miami. Uh, looking forward to going back. And then on the, on the back end of that trip, uh, we're going to actually take something that – it's difficult for us to pronounce called rest Start and to the V vacation, maybe vacation. Um, cause my uh, mom has a house uh, a couple hours North of Miami and, uh, I have a key. I think I still have a key. And so, uh, we're going to go and, and hang with my brother for a day and, and just sleep in a real bed and unpack and do some laundry and, and just walk on the beach yeah. and like chill. That's going to be nice. For a day. <laughs> um, we got, what, about two, three weeks then before, after that, to uh, Washington, D.C. Super Show. That's August Woo! 8th through the 11th. Huge, um, huge show. Awesome. Awesome show. Yep. Uh, after that, in uh, the, the, the rest of the dates, um, for the remaining shows are, are uh, to be determined. But that, then at the end of September, we'll have Dallas. Uh, Love Dallas. Yeah, another another awesome show. Uh, right after that, probably Michigan. Maybe it's Detroit. kind of a last minute thing. Yeah, um, and then this year, right after Michigan was San Fran, uh, San Francisco. Um, so if they keep the same weekends, it'll be oh my Dallas, gosh. Detroit, and San Francisco three weekends back to back. We need to buy an RV. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> or we need a driver, maybe a driver and a Both. semi. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, to round out the year, uh, one of my favorite shows uh, coming up soon, obviously, uh, in November, uh, the Columbus show, uh, Terry show. And I guess <laughs> I should mention San Francisco is also a Birdozer show as well. Yep. So, yeah. Columbus and Raleigh run by Terry Mayhorter. Um, awesome. Super fun, uh, run incredibly well. Everything goes smoothly. He's he's just such a gracious host. Yep. Always make sure that everything is going well for you. And um, you've got the auction, the dessert party. There's a pizza party. Uh, he's a smart man. He does the dessert yep. party, which includes alcohol, before the auction. He's smart, that Terry. <laughs> he is. He is. He's a good guy. Yeah. Um so. So that's uh, that's the show schedule for 2013 right now, um, and then uh, we'll talk next year. We're talking about maybe a real real vacation or a honeymoon, maybe uh, yeah. in, in Europe, and we'll add a Europe show in there, maybe. Oh my god, that is so <laughs> but, cool. Anyway, so uh, you know, if you're near any of those shows, just highly recommended. Yep. Just you know, take the time and do it. So if you're on the fence. Email go. me and ask. <laughs> I'll just tell you to go. <laughs> go. <laughs> um, so uh, this week, uh, what's uh, what's new on the on the website? Do we have anything new? Uh, we do. We, we have, have uh, something a couple you're, things. You're really excited about. That was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get to do the ordering, so I get to see some of these cool things that are available, and. It's fun when they come in and I get to play with them and, you know, some, sometimes it's a better experience than others. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we got in the new, uh, I don't know how new it is, but it's new to us, the, the Platinum Adapter so that you can use international cartridges with your Platinum, which normally takes a proprietary cartridge. So I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> it's a little real- ad- what? It's a real, really brilliant move, isn't it? <laughs> you know, we, we make these great pens, and Platinum makes great pens. They really they do. do. Uh, but, but, you know, they, I don't know why they decided they had to make their own cartridges, too. I mean. Well, so that you have to get it from them. <laughs> yeah, but then they make this. <laughs> well, because apparently people were complaining. So you have this, I don't know if you can see, but this little adapter that sticks in there um, as if it were the cartridge. And then you... Uh, 
you can use an international cartridge and they even give you one. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So, uh, that's exciting. That's, uh, you know, we, we placed a bunch of orders this week, uh, and we didn't get much in. So apparently <laughs> we have a lot of, <laughs> we stuff got a lot of stuff next coming week. next week. So, uh, yeah. well, and, and then there's something else that, that came in. We got the, the platinum, but then we had another, that was, that was the, the big little bit of excitement for the week. <laughs> oh and no. I mean, excitement. <laughs> Uh, we got a package of ink in, uh, a big box, and unfortunately, um, there was a casualty, and one of the bottles didn't make it. <laughs> um, I opened up the box, and I was all excited, and, um, and one of the is, bottles of Adam and Azure, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, um, <laughs> had broken and exploded <laughs> and leaked all over the rest of the shipment. Yeah. Um, it was bad. Yeah, so that uh, that's that's what Lisa found when she opened the box. Um, you know, it, it's a pretty uh, color. It looks good on cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful it's, color. And every uh, single Noodler's box, but yeah, a, a couple um, things could be salvaged outright somehow. They miraculously escaped the uh, the flood of Ottoman Azure. Uh, many of the ink bottles and a couple of the pens just need new boxes, which we will be receiving this week, um, and then. Some of them didn't fare quite so well. In, in yeah. fact, if I hadn't labeled the top of the bottle right away, <laughs> the ink that had stained the label just kind of kept creeping up and absorbing up. And, and a couple of them, I'm not sure you could tell what it is. Maybe if we rinse it and get all the blue off the label, but maybe not. So yeah. um, it was an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I got these. I got these pretty much blank emails from Lisa at <laughs> at work and there's no subject line, just a picture. I'm like, <laughs> well, what the heck is this? You know? And I didn't look at him at first and then I looked at him like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just wanted you to share the experience of, Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. And I, I come home and there are bottles all over the counter. You know, they're on. And, uh, uh, in various stages of of being cleaned and washed, yeah. and my hands are probably still inky. Yeah, uh, Ottoman is yours a gorgeous color, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do we do have a couple of uh, exciting things coming this next week. Oh yes. Um, I, I and the reason I say exciting is because I know one of them is for me. Um, it is. We ordered a certain pen for me. We did. We did. Are you sure? I'm. We better have. <laughs> I've been tracking. Be, I've been tracking be the FedEx if number. It doesn't come. Oh my goodness! Uh, no, I've been. I've been tracking the FedEx. Uh, or trying to see if we have FedEx on it. But uh, uh, so we have that coming. But then we also have. Uh, we do have a very special something that we have been waiting for. For mm, would would it be safe to say months? Uh, probably. Probably. Which one months. are we referring to? Um. Yes. Um, so uh, keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, and what we're going to do is uh, when this uh, special, special Very item comes special. in, uh, we're going we're gonna to drop a line out to our mailing list. So if, you, if you're not on the mailing list, I uh, highly encourage you to uh, go out there and, uh, and uh, sign up. We don't, don't send any spam out. It's usually maybe two, three uh, times a month that we send something out. No more. So don't sell your, your email address, no, none of that stuff. So, no. Are we uh, doing pre-orders on this no-name? Um, I, th I think we should. Yeah. Because um, They're going to go fast. Our, our fast. quantity is, 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 is not very, um, not a large amount that we're getting in. So, um, And then right after we get them, we're going to Columbus. So who knows what we're going to have when we get back. So. Yep. Awesome. But anyway, that's uh, I guess that's it for what's new uh, on the Sounds web. Sounds like a whole bunch of teaser stuff to me. We're terrible that way. We are. We are. But we have some, some cool things coming in, and this way you're going to check back to see what it was that we got in. Yep. And, and my new pen is going to be amazing. And your new pen. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. Am I getting a new pen? <laughs> uh, you, uh, well, you know, you hadn't picked out a Tasha yet, so... I think you were going to get one of those. But. Oh, I am going to get a Tasha. Yeah. I am. The burgundy? Burgundy coral? 
The burgundy coral, yes. It's absolutely mm-hmm. gorgeous. That would be my choice. Although I like the blue and the black <sighs> and the olive. And the green and the purple, yeah. I don't like the amethyst as much. Okay, well, there you go. So I can at least knock one of them off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Take the olive. I'll get the, the burgundy coral. That way we have testers. That's it. Testers. I don't know, though. That black staccato is really nice. It's a big size. <sighs> well, we can debate this later. Okay. When you beg and I say no. <laughs> <laughs> I want this one. No. I want this one. No. I want this one. All right, maybe. But you keep telling me to take the most expensive one, which surprises me. I figure I might as well just cave early. <laughs> <laughs> you have expensive taste. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway. any, anything else uh, this week? That is enough, That's enough. I think. Okay. Uh, comments, suggestions for topics, use your pens. Uh, write to us at Anderson Pens, P.O. Box 732, Appleton, Wisconsin, 54912. Or catch us online. Email is brian at andersonpens.net. Or lisa at andersonpens.net. You can uh, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Anderson Pens. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Anderson Pens. On the web, of course, andersonpens.net. We'll also follow the blog, andersonpens.net slash blog. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, please join our mailing list for advanced notice of upcoming events and pre-orders. Thanks for listening to our podcast. See you next week. Bye.